Joining us now is Sarah Kreps, director of the Cornell Brooks School Tech Policy Institute, again, at Cornell. Uh, Sarah, good to have you. You know, uh, we have yet to really fully understand the division that resulted in the firing of Altman, but it certainly seems to go back to these, the, the different view, perhaps, of the technology itself by the board and Mr. Altman in terms of pushing it forward towards maximum profitability versus the concerns that the old board had uh, about moving fast and what that could mean. You know, what is your overall sense here and what does it mean for the future of the company with this newly created board and Altman back at the helm? Right. No, I think you're absolutely right that this has, that, that at its core, this is about these divisions between what it means to develop AGI, artificial general intelligence, for the benefit of humanity. I don't doubt that there was agreement that they all wanted to do that. I think that there was a difference between this, the vision of the nonprofit board and the direction that the rest of the company was going. And that played out over these last few days. And I think it's pretty clear where the, who, who basically who won that debate. And, and it's clear that the, those who want to accelerate and have a vision that faster development AI benefits society won that debate. Right, they've won. Uh, so I guess we can expect they will continue to move at a, a fairly quick pace. Do you, as somebody who studies this area and, and, you know, knows this company, do you have any concerns? Do you share perhaps some of the concerns of the former board members? I'm, I'm somewhat ag agnostic, frankly, on this. I am taking an outsider view of the situation. But what I think I can say is that it will be harder to maintain those guardrails that they, you know, this company, as, as its, its founding was as a nonprofit, and they really did want to adhere to these kind of very deliberate uh, development of AI. But I think what we've seen in the last year as the uh, as this generative AI has chat GPT has exploded and as the investment has poured in, the company has grown from just in the last six months from a valuation of 29 billion to 90 billion. It's going to be even harder to to remain at kind of a deliberative pace because it's not just open AI. It's the competitors now, and there really is this arms race. Everyone's chasing the same goal, and there will be, in this winner-take-all economy that we're in, I think there will be huge dividends to the, the company or the platform that gets there first. I, I'm just looking at your, your research, your body of work, the, your research and some of the books that you published on international relations and war and democracy um, and, how the, and how those those issues collide with technology. And I'm wondering how you think Washington or the world is, is watching something like this and what the bigger ramifications are in that sphere? No, it's a great question. And it, what's interesting about this is that as the events have played out over the last few days, uh, it's clear that there was an article that this board member, Helen Toner, had written at that intersection of national security, international relations, and technology. And it appears as though she was very critical of the approach that her comp or this company, OpenAI, was taking and very laudatory toward Anthropic, which is a competitor. And so these issues really do kind of come, this Venn diagram um, at the, in the overlapping middle in very interesting ways. I think that as the previous guest was talking about, you know, uh, the NVIDIA guest, that this is at the core, NVIDIA, these chips are at the core of AI. The U.S. has had this policy where it sees tech at the center of this competition between the U.S. and China. And OpenAI has been a real leader in this space. So I think from a regulatory perspective, this becomes a, a real challenge because the, you know, Washington is thinking how we're concerned about these, uh, these safety issues. But at the, at the same time, they, uh, yeah. they recognize, I think they recognize that this is a force for good. And also these are American companies. They don't want to see these companies in, de in a deceleration mode.